What if you could actually see what the world looks like to somebody with better or worse vision than you? I'm gonna actually show you what that looks like. I have a whole collection of different lenses used in actual glasses to simulate what different eye prescriptions really look like. And along the way, I'll break down how your eyes work, what your glasses prescription really means, and what your glasses or contacts are truly doing to help you see the world better. First off, we need to understand how your eyes are supposed to work. You have a clear surface called the cornea at the very front of your eye. The inside of your eye is filled with a jelly-like substance, and there's another lens in your eye that changes its shape to help you shift your focus from things up close to you to things further away. Your cornea and that lens in your eye take in light from far away and focus that down to a point on your retina, the surface at the very back of your eyes. So if your eyes are working properly, that light is focused into a nice small spot there. But a lot can go wrong with your eyes. Here are some of the most common refractive errors or just issues with vision that cause people to wear glasses. You could be nearsighted, meaning that your eye is too powerful and focuses that light sooner than it should. So instead of that little spot being on your retina, you can see it focuses inside of the eye. And then what's on the retina is spread out, making your vision blurrier. While you could also be farsighted, which is the opposite of that. In this case, your eyes don't bend the light sharply enough, so it hasn't quite come to a point of focus yet when it hits your retina, again causing light to spread out and making your vision blurry. Now let's talk about what glasses and contacts do to fix those things. So if you're nearsighted, focusing light too soon, you need glasses that push back this point of focus, moving it from inside of your eye onto the retina. While if you're farsighted, not bending the light strongly enough, you need a lens in your glasses that bends light more, moving up that point of focus onto the retina where it should be. People who are nearsighted see things close to them more in focus than things further away. People who are farsighted see things further away more in focus than things up close to them. If you look at your glasses prescription, the first number you see will be under SPH or spherical. That's the overall power of your lenses. A negative number there means that you have nearsightedness, focusing light sooner than it should, and your glasses are pushing back that point of focus onto your retina. Those kinds of lenses are called negative or minus lenses. And with a positive number under spherical or SPH, that again means that you are farsighted and you have a positive power added that moves up the point of focus onto the retina where it should be. The bigger the magnitude of that number is, the worse your vision is, and the stronger your lenses have to be. The power of your glasses or contacts is measured in units called diopters. Now it's finally simulation time. This is a positive six diopter lens. So under SPH or spherical, it has positive six. So that means that this lens is normally used to correct for farsightedness. I turn my camera's autofocus off and I'm just gonna have it stare at this scene. Putting this positive six diopter lens in front of the camera overcorrects it. So we're actually seeing what somebody with minus six diopters of nearsightedness would see. So we're creating essentially the opposite effect of what these lenses do. Now I'm simulating minus six diopters of nearsightedness. You can see that things become blurry, but if I hold a hand closer to the camera, that hand is way more in focus than things further away. Again, simulating what minus six diopters of nearsightedness would be like. Now let's do the opposite of that. So this is a minus or negative lens with minus six diopters of spherical power. So this is normally used to correct for nearsightedness. But I'm using it to simulate positive six diopters of farsightedness. Again, things become blurry, but not quite as blurry as they were before. And now my hand up close to the camera is a lot more blurry than it was when I was simulating nearsightedness. And my hand will actually get more in focus if I can keep moving it further away. These lenses are pretty strong though, so the effects are relatively extreme. All right. That's what the overall power or that SPH or spherical specification of your glasses means. But that doesn't even address a super common eye condition that 40% of adults have, astigmatism. Astigmatism is weird. It means that your eye, usually your cornea, has an asymmetric shape. Instead of being perfectly circular, it's warped in one direction like an oval. That means that your eye focuses light differently in perpendicular directions. 
So if you have astigmatism, your vision could be focusing perfectly in one direction of your eye, let's say this way, while in the perpendicular direction being very nearsighted or farsighted. If you look at your eye prescription, the CYL or cylinder specification lets you know if you have astigmatism. If there's a zero there, you don't have any astigmatism. But if you do have any number there, that means that you have that asymmetric shape to your eye and therefore your glasses also need an asymmetric shape to correct for that. Like the spherical specification, the bigger the magnitude of the number you have under CYL or cylinder, the more extreme your astigmatism is, the more asymmetric your eye is, and the more differently your glasses or contacts have to be curved in different directions. And the next number on your prescription should be axis, which describes the angle at which you have this asymmetric shape to your eyes. But what does astigmatism really look like? Let's check it out. This lens has positive six under spherical, minus three under cylinder, and 180 under axis. That means that when we put this in front of the camera, we're going to simulate minus six diopters of nearsightedness, positive three diopters of astigmatism, and 180 just lets the eye doctor know how to orient that lens in your glasses so that you're seeing properly. Because the lens corrects for astigmatism, if I rotate it, you see some funky changing effects because it bends light differently in different directions. So if I bring this up to the camera, if I rotate it, there's some just weirdness of, you know, me rotating a lens that's not perfectly centered. But if we look at one specific detail, let's look at the tiny little lines at the top there. Here it's super blurry. As I rotate this, in a certain dimension, it will become more crisp. And then if I rotate it 90 degrees, it becomes more blurry again. So it's hard to simulate this exactly, but that's some of the effects of what it would look like to have astigmatism. Contact lenses work in the exact same way as what we've shown, with the same eye prescription meanings and definitions of, all right, the lens being asymmetric if you have astigmatism, etc. So nearsightedness, farsightedness, and astigmatism are the three main vision errors called refractive errors that could be messing up your vision and causing you to wear glasses. But there's another special kind of glasses lens I'd like to talk about, progressive lenses. Progressive lenses have different amounts of spherical power across different parts of the lenses. They have extra power at the bottom to help you see things up close, while the power gets weaker as you move up higher on the lens. That makes sense because if you're looking at something up close, like if you're reading, you're usually looking down at it, while if you're looking at something further away, you're often using more of the top of your vision. You've probably heard of bifocals. These are simplified versions of modern progressive lenses, where there's a sharp cutoff between a stronger lens at the bottom and a weaker lens up at the top. If you're looking at the eye prescription for progressive lenses, the add specification describes how much extra power is added to the bottom of the lenses to help you better see things up close. Now let's do some simulations using progressive lenses. Now we're just looking at some blinds indoors instead of the same outdoor simulations. I tried holding this progressive lens up to the camera, but you really couldn't appreciate any of the differences in this particular lens, but here, I can show you that the bottom of the lens is stronger than the top of it. You see how the horizontal lines from my blinds are bent more at the bottom compared to the top? That's because of the progressive nature of these lenses with more power at the bottom to help you see things up close better. So that's what the world looks like under different eye prescriptions. Did those simulations seem to match your experience or do you see something different than what was shown if you have one of those eye prescriptions? Let me know down in a comment, and please subscribe if you found this interesting or helpful. Thanks a lot.